Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. There's a lot of talk about NAD, particularly NAD supplementation. Now, my job is to inform you about what NAD actually is and what it does in the body. So this is what this video is going to go through. So to begin with, we need to know that NAD actually stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and it's a carrier molecule. Now the question is, what is it carrying? Well, it's actually carrying electrons and protons that can be utilized by the mitochondria to produce that wonderful energy that we call ATP. That's the whole purpose of it. But you need to think about it like this. NAD, biochemically, as a carrier molecule, it's actually NAD+. That's how it's floating through the body. Now, NAD+, ultimately wants to turn into something called NADH. And how does this occur? That's the next question. But before we jump into this, I need to talk to you about some really basic chemistry. Remember the periodic table where you've got hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and so forth. Hydrogen is the first atom on the periodic table. And just so you remember, you've got hydrogen, then helium, then lithium, right? Hydrogen number one. It's number one, it has one proton. So that's one positive charge in its core. And it has one electron, which is a negatively charged thing flying around the outside. This is hydrogen, right? This is the atom hydrogen. Now that we've got that one positive proton in the core, one electron that's negatively charged flying around the outside, if you want to interact with hydrogen, the only thing you can really interact with is that electron. Keep that in mind, all right? Now remember that within our body, we've got our micronutrients, things like, well, we've got macronutrients like proteins, fats, and carbs, and they get broken down into their micronutrients. So let's focus on carbohydrates getting broken down into glucose, all right? Remember that, glucose. And remember the chemical structure of glucose is C6, H12, O6, all right? Six carbons, 12 hydrogens, six oxygens. Now, glucose, in order for us to remember, we utilize glucose in the body to produce energy, right? So the way we do this is glucose needs to undergo something called glycolysis to produce something called pyruvate. And then pyruvate needs to enter the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria. And both of these spit out something. What they actually spit out is NADH, but we'll get there in a sec. And then the products of the Krebs cycle enter the electron transport chain, oxidative phosphorylation, ATP is produced. But we're starting off with glucose. Glucose wants to turn into pyruvate. So pyruvate has a chemical structure of C3H4O3. Now remember, one glucose molecule actually turns into two pyruvate molecules. So we actually have two of these. What that means is we actually have C6H8O6. Now compare that to the original glucose. What changed? Same amount of carbons, same amount of oxygens. But what we've done is we've stolen some hydrogen. And this is what NAD plus does. It steals hydrogen. Now, what specifically is it stealing from this hydrogen? That electron. And what it actually does is one NAD molecule will go to two hydrogen and steal two electrons because it can. And what it's left with is obviously gonna be two protons, right? Now, one of the protons it takes on board and the other one it freely lets float throughout the solution. So it releases this free proton, all right? So this is what happens. One NAD plus steals two hydrogen, takes two electrons, one of the protons, and frees the other proton. And what you're left with is NADH, okay? Now, when we look at glycolysis, this process of glucose to pyruvate, we produce two NADH, which means we use four hydrogen, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, there's the four hydrogen from going from glucose to pyruvate. It makes total sense. So we're actually producing here, we take NAD plus and we turn it into NADH. The same thing actually happens in this Krebs cycle. We also produce NADH. Now why? Why does it wanna do this process? So 
This NADH that we're now producing, remember, it's got electrons associated with it. It's hugging these electrons and it's hugging some protons. Once it's in this mitochondria, what happens is that the NAA, NADH releases those negative electrons and releases those positive protons. And what we find, I'll move over here, and what we find is that embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria are some enzymes. And what these enzymes do is they take these electrons and they pass them to each other. One electron goes to the next enzyme that goes to the next enzyme. This is the electron transport chain. It's transporting electrons. And as it does this, it allows for these positive protons to be pushed into this intermembrane space. So through the transport of electrons, it allows for the protons to be pushed into this intermembrane space. And what we end up having is a high concentration of positive protons in the intermembrane space. High concentration here, low concentration here. We know diffusion, that this high concentration wants to go down to a low concentration. It wants to diffuse down, but it has to do it through a structure. Now this structure, importantly, is part of an ATP synthase. So as it allows for these hydrogen ions to diffuse down their concentration gradient, it steals the energy from this process of diffusion and hijacks it to produce ATP. So as you can see, the whole purpose of NAD plus in the body is to steal electrons and protons from hydrogen within important molecules like glucose. It then takes it into the mitochondria, releases the electrons and protons. The electrons are transported via the electron transport chain, which then pushes these protons into the intermembrane space. They move down through diffusion through this channel, which is associated with an ATP synthase that produces a butt ton of ATP, which is energy. So NAD and NAD plus is used to produce energy.